special one has once again been sacked. AS Roma have sacked Jose Mourinho, the man who gave them a European trophy, made it to two European finals, if I'm not mistaken, and gave a lot of youngsters like Bove a chance to start for the team and establish themselves as future legends, possibly up to the levels of De Rossi and Totti. Talking about De Rossi, he is the one that they are going ahead and signing as a new coach, according to reports. And right now, AS Roma clearly need help you might be asking why why did jose Mourinho get fired well let me show you currently as we speak first position 51 points as roma 29 far far away from where fans and the club itself wanted to see as roma but i gotta say it's been beautiful to see the outpouring of love coming towards Mourinho, even from the Roma fans that hate to see him go. But sometimes things just don't work out and AS Roma right now are in a very, very odd spot. I believe during the time of Jose Mourinho being at the club from an article that I've just seen, he only signed one player and that might have been Zeki Celik and they pushed themselves into the top 10 of European clubs based on the rankings during a time where big clubs spent tons and tons of money. So the job that he's done at AS Roma, the job that he has done at the likes of Porto and the likes of Inter, this man deserves respect. In my opinion, if you put Pep Guardiola into, a, into a, a team like AS Roma, into a team like Porto, or possibly Inter as well, I don't think he can replicate what Mourinho has done. Let me know what you think about that. And also let me know, where do you think Jose Mourinho is going next? So what are we looking at when we see the AS Roma squad? We see a Romelu Lukaku up top, who has the most goals this season for the team. Eight goals in the Serie A. Then you have Dybala with five, but I know personally, I don't know if I'm wrong on this one, Dybala has been injured very often, very frequently. Sometimes he plays, sometimes he doesn't. It's just on and off, way too consistently. And that's something that definitely hurt this, ace, uh, this AS Roma squad. I really like what they have done, though. Whenever he plays, I like Dybala a lot. He has always been a player that I really enjoyed watching play. And I wonder what's going to happen with him because he is now also about like 30 years old in real life. Right here, he's still 29. So we can use him at least like for like two, three seasons, maybe. But Lukaku is here. I mean, having to rely on Lukaku to score goals for you, especially at the time when he joined AS Roma, I felt like it was quite negative. A lot of people were not really wanting him to join, but maybe somewhere. But this guy has gotten eight goals. He's the top scorer of the team. And then you have someone like Belotti off the bench with three goals straight after Dybala and Lukaku. So you can immediately see that there's not that much attacking output. Uh, in terms of assists, you have Dybala on six assists. Leandro Paredes is the one with three. And then you have Spinazzola on two. Now, obviously, the game of football is not only relying on goals and assists as well. But generally speaking, things have not necessarily worked out. I once again went back into seeing who AS Roma signed. Most of the transfers that they brought in were free transfers. Someone like Endika from Frankfurt came in as a free transfer. Someone like Renato Sanchez, from what I can tell, was a free transfer as well. Just like Awar here. But I don't know what it is. I mean, they have some top players. Tammy Abraham at one point looked incredible in the Serie A. I don't know what happened there. If you guys have any idea, let me know in the comments down below. I assume he was injured because I have not heard anything of Tammy Abraham since that one season where he was incredible. Chris Smalling was, everyone was talking about him at, at one point and people were saying he should be back into the into, like England national team. I'm not talking about right now, but there was a time where he was seen as one of the better center backs when it comes to England and he was playing outside of England, obviously. Pellegrini is a midfielder that can do so many things for an AS Roma side and just thinking about that I'm just wondering what is what has happened to Lorenzo Pellegrini he is still playing yeah he's still playing he had a massive period of injury actually this season he missed like what nine games or something that's a lot missing out on Pellegrini for that many games is really tough because as far as I remember he was a captain of the squad as well and then looking at the rest here I just, I don't know, man. It doesn't feel right. AS Roma, it always used to be a team I sympathize with. And you can see this theme with many of the Serie A teams. For me personally, I don't know what it is, but I cannot hate a Serie A side. I don't know what it is. I just sympathize with nearly all of them. I'm not a fan of any of them, but I really like Italian football in that sense. For some reason, I can connect 
to the teams and the fans quite well and understand what they're kind of going through. But this team definitely needs help. As we know, things have not gone well. And for me, when it comes to like building around certain players, I would have to say definitely the next Totti. That one has to be the one. Ove has to be the number one on my list. Apart from him, when we're looking at the higher rated players, we see a bunch of aging players. And that surely is an issue with AS Roma as well. Rui Patricio, 35. Chris Smalling, 33. Spinazzola, 30. Lukaku, 30. El Sharavi, 30. And when you go on the younger side, you don't necessarily have that many players that you can rely on for the future for the future of this club to be built on, I guess. And Dika is one of them. Svilar, I don't really know if he's actually any good. I remember this kid was supposed to be a wonder kid at some point. Kumbula is here with a decent rating. You have Darbo loaned out. And then you go down. Zalewski, as far as I know, is also a big talent. But Bove is definitely the one. And then lower than that, you don't really see much. So we're going we're gonna to have a proper open heart surgery on AS Roma right here. And just change the face of the team. And hopefully take it back to winning trophies. And being a way more dominant team than it is. I am going to say to you right now. I'm not going to be playing the formation that uh, that got uh, Jose Mourinho fired. So I'm going to change the formation, change everything about the club, wherever I can, to hopefully give it a new dynamic. I already set up my plan. Here it is. Smalling has left. He barely played this season. I don't think he even played, actually. 24.9 million. Belotti has left. He has been linked to moves multiple times. I don't even know if he's still there. 17.5 for him. Cast up. He had an issue with Mourinho. You're out. 15.7. El Sharavi is gone as well. You'll see why in a second. Celic has left. Rui Patricio is gone. Kumbula and Zalewski have left on loan. The formation I want to play with this team is central heavy. Yes, no more three at the back. We are going with the 4-1-2-1-2. That is the formation that I used to love on Ultimate Team. A formation that I haven't revisited in quite a long time because it is so central and you don't have any wingers at all. And uh, your fullbacks will have to do a lot of the attacking. So we'll see how we figure this out. But this is the initial formation I want to go for. I'm currently changing Dybala to a center attacking midfielder, which should also raise his rating, if I'm not mistaken. Bang! He goes up to an 88, and that makes him an even more valuable player. Now, as I go into this season, now that I've sold those players, our budget is around 153 million. So what I want to do is I want to build the future. So Lukaku, I was thinking of like releasing him from his loan, but then again... I think he's the one that I might be able to use the most. Asmoon, you can go. There's no use for him. Renato Sanchez, things haven't necessarily worked out. Even though I absolutely loved this guy back in the day as a talent. Right now, I don't see a future for him over here. We're going to let go of Lorente as well. Zalewski is out on loan. Christensen, has he been purchased permanently? I don't know. I'll have to check that in just a second before I actually let him go. Matias Vigna is here as well. Shomorudov is out on loan. I'm not going to recall any of those lads, but you can tell that I'm trying to bring in players or at least hold on to players that I want to believe in for the project right here. We're going to be playing Tammy and Lukaku up top, the former Chelsea men. Dybala behind them. Bove, Pellegrini in center midfield. Cristante in the, in the CDM position. And Dika and Mancini in the center back spots. And then Christensen and Spinazzola. Goalkeeper, obviously can't be Svilar. Multiple positions could be changing in just a second because we have 150 million to spend. So let's begin the rebuild. For once, I'm not starting off in the goalkeeping position, but I'm starting off with a player who has been linked to Bayern Munich heavily in this transfer window. It is Sasha Bowie from Galatasaray. This man has impressed me so much. Every time I see him play, I'm like, how the hell is he still in Turkey? He's going to make a massive move. So many more people are going to know about him. And I'm, as a Bayern fan, I'm so sad that Bayern have not picked him up yet. They are currently working on getting Mukiele from PSG and want to have him as a centre-back slash right-back uh, a player for the Bayern squad that can be rotated into multiple positions. But for me, I would take Bowie any day this guy is class and brighton is apparently very interested in him as well if they get him they're going to sell him on for so much money in the future and Bayern munich are being stingy about it and not want to pay like 25 30 million just make it happen man you're one of the biggest clubs in football but hey 
You know what? I'm getting him right now for this AS Roma squad. I've looked it up and Christensen is still on loan. He's going to be going back to Leeds United after this season. So I want someone that can be committed to the club long term and someone that can move forward and get things done. High attacking work rate, but also high defensive work rate. Sasha Bowie, remember the name. This guy is amazing. Real Madrid had to deal with a lot of injuries this season, especially the likes of Eder Militao, but also most importantly, Courtois. And this man has stepped up during that time. Even though Real Madrid brought in Kepa Arizabalaga, who had some of the good games this season for sure. For me, Andri Lunin has been the standout one. This guy has always been the number two, has sat, has just sat back and waited for his moment to shine. And for me, he looked very good in a bunch of the games I've seen him play. So I thought, you know what? Before Courtois is back and healthy and taking away your position, let's bring you across to AS Roma for just 15 million, which is a very low amount. He comes in at a 76 rating. 24 years old from Ukraine. This guy could be the future in that position for us, which I'm very excited about. And currently, as we speak, I'm looking to loan Bove out because I do know that players like Paredes and Pellegrini are going to be taking away playtime from him in simulations. So Bove at first will be loaned out, but then this man is captain material and we're going to build the team around him. So don't you worry. Now, having that deal done, I'm thinking about something, and that is the Lukaku situation. Because we do have so much money to spend, 105 million, and Lukaku is only loaned into the squad. I don't know if AS Roma actually have like a buy option in real life, but for the future of this team, do I want to go into the transfer market and bring in a pair uh, or a player that can pair with Tammy Abraham for the upcoming season? Ideally, I don't want to have two big men up front. Tammy Abraham, six foot five, Lukaku, six foot three. I want to have someone that is a little bit more agile, a little bit more on the pacey side that can get in behind if Tammy flicks on the ball into the attack. So, Lukaku, I think I'm going to end your loan right now and find the right man. 20 games, 11 goals, 3 assists in the Bundesliga. This is Eintracht Frankfurt's new striker that had joined them from the likes of Wolfsburg previously. This guy is Omar Marmouche and he is on fire fire right now in the Bundesliga. He is one of those types of players that just excites you. When you watch him play, you know when he gets onto the ball, something is about to happen. At least you're having fun watching this boy play and he's now coming in to be the one next to Tammy. Now, Tammy is not necessarily a long-term project here. He could actually, he could be. He's only 25. Why shouldn't he? Marmouche is here. 86 pace, exactly what I'm looking for. Good shooting and great dribbling. This guy is technical. He can get past people. He's six foot tall, still not short. So he can also be physical if necessary. But from what I've seen from him in Frankfurt, which is the city that I live right next by, he has been so good. Like the way he has played in an Eintracht side that a lot of people expected to do a lot worse this season has been so impressive to me. Him and Fares Chaibi have been so good for that team. So I thought, you know what? This could be the perfect opportunity for us to get him into the team. Omar Marmouche, I know you're currently at the Africa Cup, but now you are AS Roma's second striker. In real life, Roma fans would probably be happy if they actually finished the season somewhere around the spot where we finished. Fifth. Fourth would have obviously been amazing to get Champions League football, but that is not the case. And that's okay, because in the Europa League itself, we actually made it quite far. We were part of the semi-finals and have gotten beaten by a very strong Leverkusen team, which obviously is no shame. And then it was a German final and Dortmund actually picked up the trophy. Talking about Dortmund, Jadon Sancho now there, Ian Matzen there. People don't talk about and, uh, Ian Matzen enough. I watched him at Burnley. He was class. This man could move forward and defend at the same time. He was so, so dangerous with his passes as well. I think Dortmund have brought in a massive player there. I think Chelsea have put in like a 35 million release clause. I don't know if Dortmund can pay that, but we'll see what happens. Let's move on into the player's stats. So Tammy has gone up by plus three. Marmouche has gone up by plus three. Dybala only a plus one after the position change. Pellegrini 85, Paredes plus one, Cristan plus one. You can tell that there's not much growth apart from these position, uh, positions. Sorry, Bowie has gotten a plus five. Mancini has gone up, which I didn't personally expect. He's 28 years old. He's our captain. Then you have Endika going from a 78 to an 82 and Lunin going up to a 78. 
and I had to loan out Svilar because he was taking away playtime from Looney. Now I can take him off the transfer list again, thankfully, uh, because Svilar just went nuts in the first half. He kept playing. <laughs> I want Looney to be the main man. So he's out on loan for two years at Real Sociedad, and uh, he's going to be growing nicely. But here we are. Tammy, 23 and 8. Marmouche, 21 and 6. Dybala, 20 and 6. Pellegrini, 19 and 13. Cristant from center defensive mid. Cristante, sorry. Uh, with the 9 and 15. He's not French. It's not Cristant. But anyways, uh, we can also see Bové. How is his rating looking right now? Where is Bové? Where is he? Where's our boy? Wait. Is he gone? I only loaned him out, right? I didn't sell him. There he is. Ooh. Okay. He's up to a 76. Next season, I think I'm just going to sell Paredes to make sure that he gets that playtime. 76 is good enough for Europa League and all that stuff. But is it going to be good enough to make us qualify for Champions League football? Probably not. But he's going to grow next season anyways. And probably reach the 80. So it's all good. Okay, so this next player that I'm bringing in is a player I saw. I saw his picture and I was like, this guy, he just screams AS Roma. I'll show you in just a second what I'm talking about. So first of all, you can see right here that he has that long hair already. This is a left back that I'm bringing in. It is Ricardo Calafiori. I mean, look at that picture and tell me he doesn't look like he belongs to AS Roma. I saw that and I was like, hold on. Maybe he actually belonged to AS Roma. And I realized he did. Yes, he was actually part of AS Roma at one point. He used to play for them back in 2022. He, uh, he came back from his loan at Genoa, went to Basel for 2.6 million. And from Basel, he has gone to Bologna once again. So that is the story of Calafiori, who is doing really well this season at the moment. And I'm bringing, bringing this guy in at the age of 22. He's six foot two tall. I'm bringing him in because I think uh, Spinazzola is going to drop in his rating at some point very soon. Ideally, I would actually like to sell Spinazzola. I still remember the tournament that he played for Italy he was ridiculously good he looked like the best left back in the world at the time and I probably will move him on because I do want to play Calafiori he returns to AS Roma after being moved around and shifted around to different clubs now he's back home I mean that haircut just screams to me I'm Totti's son so yeah he had to be here and Bove is going to be playing alongside him. I've just let go of Spinazzola, 21.6. Awar has had to go so that Bove can play. And the same goes for Paredes. Just to update you guys on the current situation at this squad. I think I'm going to go into the season with this team right now. I'm very confident that we can actually do better than last season. Especially due to our attacking output. AS Roma season is finished and things are looking better. Champions League football for AS Roma. As we get ourselves 80 points, 12 points behind AC Milan, slowly progressing in the league table and hopefully next season competing for the title if possible. Now, I have left a lot of money on the table. If we go into the office, you'll realize I have 200 million to spend. So much money that I still could have spent, but I decided to stick around with these players. Tammy up to an 86, Marmouche 83, Dybala 92, Pellegrini 87, Ove up to an 82, Cristant 85, he's 30 now. We are seeing Bowie on an 88, his growth has been unreal over here. And uh, Mancini 87, Mandica 84, Calafiori up to an 80 already in his first season with Lunin only going up to 80, which is maybe not ideal. Maybe I need to think about bringing in a different goalkeeper because if we do have that much money, we should be spending it wisely. Now, having said that as well, if I do bring in new players into the starting 11 with the cash that we have, I can fill up the bench with the others that I don't need anymore. Because right now, as we speak, as you can clearly tell, we don't really have that many great options here. We have Kumbula, we have Vinya, and then we have Darbo. The rest, I'm not really feeling the vibes of these players being useful moving forward. So we definitely need to sort that situation out because I do feel like that's going to improve our performances as well. But uh, going into the squad hub, I'm assuming Dybala is the man. Yes, he is. 26 and 13 from the camp position. Tammy and Marmouche have done really well for themselves here. Pellegrini once again in that midfield. This man scores goals and gets assists for fun. So I love that. And then Eduardo, he's on fire. 7 and 5. Good stuff from him. We need to move forward and see. Ages. Okay, so Dybala is 31 years old. If I sell him now, I could be making bank. Yeah, I can sell him for over 100 million. Oh, do I want to sell Dybala already? No, I'm going to keep him for at least one more season. At least until he starts going down. Uh, Cristant is 30. I can move him on. Mancini as well. I think those two are the ones that I personally would ideally like to move on. 
then again, eh, we'll see. I haven't made my mind up. I need to fill up the bench now. And before we actually move into the next season, we have won the cup, guys. Yes, we have won a trophy this season. So let's keep bringing in more. This is the point where things just go crazy. I've gone ahead and started a new era at AS Roma now. 160 million for Paolo Dybala, 93.5 for Mancini, 65.3 for Cristante, which means we're going shopping, my friends. Part one of going crazy, here it is. Mohamed Kudus, the man who has eight goals and one assist for West Ham this season, is joining us to be the next Dybala. I know he's a right midfielder, but I can turn him into a center attacking mid. The position he is supposed to play for us. Now, we did pay a lot, but I do believe he's the future. So Kudus comes in that camp position, 91 pace. 86 dribbling, four-star skill moves, left-footed, just like Dybala as well. Obviously not as good in shooting, currently only on a 79, but I do believe he can be the main man in there to get those goal contributions, even uh, just scoring from outside the box. That could be something. So now that we've sorted out the camp position, we're going to move one position lower into the CDM spot. Joan Neves' rise at Benfica and the performances of all Kunkerkju have pushed Florentino Luis out of the starting 11. So now I want him to be my CDM. This man is definitely getting a move this summer. Someone is going to pick him up, probably a Premier League side. If someone in the Serie A is smart, they should be getting him too. So Florentino Luis is the one I want for that CDM position. He's one rating below Kudus, but I do like the fact that a bunch of the players that we're bringing now are more around the same level level of rating as the others in the team. Ibala was just so far ahead of anyone else and then it was Pellegrini. So Florentino is here but a center back though I'm ready to pay a lot of money. Yes for that one I want to go big big because we need a leader at the back and Mancini has left and we still have 400 million to spend. This man used to be the man in the Serie A. Cristian Romero the current Spurs player used to play at Atalanta and he was a leader at the back. Someone that was able to get goals and assists as well from the centre-back position, which is pretty impressive. Three goals, three assists, I believe. Actually, no, sorry, I'm completely... No, yeah, he did get three goals and three assists at his time at Atalanta. Not just in one season, though, so let's keep that in mind. But this guy is coming into our squad right now. Kumbula, sorry, pal, but you're going to be dropping to the bench once again. Now, we have a bunch of good players here that we actually could be putting onto the bench as we do fill it up. I think I'm going to turn Zalewski into a cam. That will take him a little while, but that's going to be okay. Romero is the leader now at the back. I don't want to give him the captaincy, though, because, as you guys know, the captain of this team needs to be Bobe, the totti of this squad. And uh, I think we have made some really good signings here. But, Lunin. Hmm. 81. Is that good enough? We want to compete in a Champions League. Do I give this boy more of a chance? I'll give him one season. If he grows nicely, he sticks around. If he doesn't... Bye-bye. So here I am now, halfway through the season in January, and I'm bringing in players to fill up the bench even more. Hugo Larsson from Eintracht Frankfurt, not Ghent, is joining us right now. I definitely overpaid for this one, but I'm happy that I did because he's a class player. This guy has a bright future ahead. He is from Sweden, 6'2", tall midfielder. Has had a nice impact on that Eintracht Frankfurt team. And then I also brought in Bayer, another German coming in into the squad right here. 23 years old, 6'1", tall. 81 rated at this stage, could be a perfect backup for the likes of Marmouche and Tammy Abraham. Kudus now a center attacking midfielder and the bench generally looking just way more solid now as well, which is something that I wanted to achieve anyway. So let's see how the season ends. The season is now over and I do not see a Champions League final or anything like that. Uh, we have gone through into, I would assume those are the quarters. Yeah, I think those are the quarters. But Barcelona kicked us out. In the cup, we lost against Napoli. Before that, we beat Atletico Madrid. So quarterfinalists this season in the Champions League with a team that obviously lost a lot of rating, but gained it back nicely in many positions. The strikers are looking very solid in terms of what they're doing. Manmush is a bit unhappy, maybe because of his contract. We can sort all of that out. Romero... Very unhappy. So again, that might be a contract issue. I might have to sort all of this out. But Bobe is up to an 87. I love that. I mean, he has already caught up to the likes of Endika. Uh, Kalia Fiori is only on an 84. That could, could be a little bit of an issue. But we'll see how that goes. I do believe he has still grown this season, though. Because he did come in at a lower rating, didn't he? Yeah, he did get a plus four. So can't really complain about that. 
And when we look into the goals and assists, Tammy at the top, Marmouche right behind him, Pellegrini again, 30 goal contributions off the bench by are coming in with 14 and 2. That is impressive. Kudus, 10 goal contributions in his first season. That's not bad, but it's also not amazing. It is, however, very impressive that our highest rated player is Sasha Bowie. This guy just keeps on growing as a right back. It's incredible to see. So I'm going to have to sort out the contract situations with a bunch of these players to make sure that we do not lose out on them. In the league itself, we came in third. So I would say from this season on, titles are a must. I mean, we have won the cup once so far. I don't think we have won it this time. No, we have not. So not getting any trophies this season, it is a little bit of a letdown, but we can somewhat justify it by saying we have downgraded in a couple of positions, specifically from Dybala to Kudus initially. Things have been going exceptionally well as we go through in the cup and also get past Chelsea. 5-4, Roma dropped out of the cup. Bayern Leverkusen, 4-1. Let's go, lads. We are in the Champions League final. AS Roma have won the cup, I believe, against Spezia right there. Let me just double check that. Is that true? So, Super Cup. We have not won that one. Oh, no, not Super Cup. Coppa Italia. Let's go. All right, that's one big trophy. Spezia in the final. Congratulations, Serie A. Yes, double. That means we have the treble on the line. This Roma team, it took us long to be able to compete for trophies, but now we're competing for multiple in the same season. Tammy on a 90. He was here from the beginning. Marmouche up to an 89. I think he's going to be my best player on the pitch alongside Kudus, who now looks even better than when he came in into the squad. Pellegrini has been unreal this whole time. Bove is the captain. Florentino on an 88. Romero on a 90 alongside Endica. Then you have Calafiori up to an 88. That makes a massive difference. And Sasha Bowie has gone up once more. And Lunin, I trusted him. At the end of last season, he was 85 rated. Now he's 87. He paid off that trust. And we do have some decent players on the bench as well, which I'm pretty happy with. Even a goalkeeper with Svilad right here. So things are looking really rosy at the moment. Let me go and see the stats. Aya? What? Oh my God. This guy played over Marmouche. He has 32 goals and 15 assists. <laughs> that is insane. He was on the bench, bro. What is going on with you? Hey, I got to use this guy in a different uh, rebuild. Remember, uh, remind me in the next uh, couple of rebuilds if I keep forgetting. Maximilian Baia seems to be someone I need to buy. Tammy with 23 and 6. Bobe with the 19 and 11. Pellegrini with 25 goal contributions. Marmouche in 16 games, 10 goals. So that's decent. Uh, Kudus with the 9 and 5. Obviously, Marmouche is going to start for me. If I'm struggling, maybe I'm going to sub on Baia. We'll have to decide that later on, but... Wow, I'm actually impressed with that buyer situation. So we're on for a treble and we're up against Real Madrid. Oh no, oh no. Okay, so let's see how this one goes because as you guys know, I think my last rebuild with Luton Town, did I fail in the Champions League final? One of the latest rebuilds actually failed in the Champions League final. It's been a while since I did, but now I'm a bit scared going into this. So we are up against Real Madrid coming in with Vinny, Julian Alvarez, Jude, KDB, Valverde, Laporta playing CDM. Trent, Militao, Marquinhos. Oh my God, bro. This team is nuts. And they play the same formation as we do. It's going to be a battle of the 4-1-2-1-2. Oh, okay then. So how do we manage to win this trophy when we're up against such an insane team? AS Roma without Mourinho, but with Mourinho, they did win a European trophy. And some of the players that we still have here have been part of that process. So let's see if this can work out and I can come out victorious with Omar Marmouche, Tammy Abraham, and a shot into the top right. This is incredible football. KDB passes and everything just seems to work out so easily for them. Luckily, he decides to go to the bottom left. If he goes to the right, that's a goal for Vinny Jr. Romero. Oh, that's a terrible pass, buddy. That is a horrific pass. And Jude needs to be stopped. And so does Vinny. I'm going to close down the passing lanes. Vinny Jr. <laughs> he does not need to pass. What is he doing? 
I thought I was being smart by going second man press using Romero to cover Jude. But no, Vinny has shown just like he did in real life against Barcelona. He can get things done by himself. Real Madrid just wiggling their way through so easily. Marmouche. Tammy, can you make that run for me? Tammy, please win that. Yes, Tammy. Go on. Smack it. Let's go, Tammy. Beautifully done. Get in. I just realized that Lunin is actually playing against his former side, but uh, he is now hopefully going to be on the winning side. Tammy just shoving off the defender with such ease. The physicality is just a huge advantage for him in that spot. That's why you have a tall striker and a small one. But then again, Marmouche is six foot tall as well. So, you know, it's fine. Oh, that's a good run from Kudus. Mohamed Kudus across to Marmouche. Marmouche, what are you doing? Kudus cuts across. Left foot. Strike comes off. Close one. Jude not being stopped yet. Calafiori needs to come back. Trent has a whip on him. We can't let Trent whip it in. Please. That's what happens when you let it, let it happen down that wing. Trent whips it. Ferlam and he scores it on the other side. <sighs> right when I thought I was just getting control over this game, man. Yes. Oh my god, what a terrible attempt at a pass. That was not what was intended to happen. Marmouche. Oh, I thought he scored. There's now Marmouche. Showing a bit of strength. Good ball. Pellegrini. Tammy. Left foot. Tammy. Yes. Tammy, thank you so much for everything you have done in this Champions League final and more. Oh, it's 2-2. It's basically nil-nil again. Real Madrid just need one chance, man. They will score. I need multiple. Romero. Brazilian against Argentinian. The Brazilian is ruining everyone. And Jude Bellingham missed the target from that close. If that isn't an invitation to win this game, I don't know what would be. Good pass. Pellegrini. Marmouche. Marmouche, can you play a beautiful pass? Yes, you can. It's Kudus. It's Tammy. I don't know why I passed it. I swear to God, I wanted to shoot with Kudus initially, but then realized I pressed the pass button. Thank you, Tammy, for a hat-trick in the Champions League final. This is for Mourinho. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Lunin again. 84 back-to-back -back saves. Is Real Madrid going to be able to get the equalizer? Or is the ref blowing the whistle? Yes, he is. Tammy with a hat-trick wins it in the end for AS Roma. So that trophy will be lifted by Totti 2.0. Bove is coming in and doing it. It's a very, very sad story for me personally to see Jose Mourinho constantly go to teams, win trophies... And then the next season, if things don't work out, you just get kicks out, kicked out that easily. I would love to hear what the players think, though. And the fans. If you are an AS Roma fan, please let me know. I obviously don't have 100% knowledge on things. So please let me know about situations that might have arised in there that really didn't look good for Mourinho. But guys, we got it done in the end. Tammy, once again, thank you. But the rest of the team also. Huge shout out to Lunin, the defenders and the midfielders. Have a good one, guys. Take care and peace.